We already know that the user will progress to the next level once they've destroyed all of the bricks. So the first thing that we need to work out is how do we count how many bricks are still living? Well, this is actually pretty simple within Phaser. What we can do is say this bricks, which remember is our bricks group, and we can say count living. That's gonna go ahead and give us uh, the count of our living bricks. Now, if I just go ahead and log this out, notice that what we'll get, if we just head over to the uh, browser, we can see that we've got 74, 73, 72, and so on and so forth. So what we can do with this is use it to our advantage and go ahead and check if we have uh, no living bricks. So we can say, is this, or if we do have living bricks, we can say greater than zero. Well, in that case, we want to return. Down here, we want to increment the level. So you can switch up the if statements depending on your coding style. But now what I want to do is just say this game global level and I want to set that to plus equal one. So go ahead and increment that by one, or you can do plus plus if you want to. And we're going to go ahead and like we did uh, earlier with our score text, we're going to set the level text text to level and then the level that we've just incremented. So let's grab this, pop that in here, and that's going to work. Now we have a couple of other things that we need to do down here. Have a think about what that might be. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and test that the level increments when we've destroyed all of the bricks. Now, I don't expect you to watch me destroy all of these before we get to the next level. So what we're going to do is just come up to where we generate our bricks uh, here. And I'm going to set rows and columns to one. Of course, what that's going to do is give us one row and one column, e.g. one brick. So if I go ahead and release this and get rid of that, notice that the level does increment. But what's happened here? Well, we're not regenerating the bricks and we're not placing the ball back on the paddle ready for the next level. Now, I mentioned earlier that the reason we extracted out the put ball on paddle method is so we can set that to true and go ahead and reset the position of the ball. So what we can do is once we have destroyed all of them bricks just down here, we can go ahead and say this put ball on paddle, that's going to solve that issue. So if we just go over give this a refresh and destroy this brick. That's gonna put that ball back on the paddle in the state that we need it. Because we have that global ball on paddle variable set to true, that's going ahead and sticking to the paddle as we set up earlier, but we haven't regenerated bricks. So what we do is just say this, generate bricks, and we pass in the bricks group that we previously created. So now, despite the fact we only have one brick, if I go ahead and destroy that, the ball is back on the paddle, the scores incremented, the level is incremented, and we can carry on doing this for however many levels that we have. So there we go. In the next part, we're going to look at handling the lost ball. So e.g. at the moment, when I go ahead and click on this and I move my paddle, that's going to go ahead and bounce straight off the bottom. We can't detect if the ball has been lost. So let's handle that in the next part.